Over the weekend, Ansar Allah, popularly known as the Houthis, attacked two ships. What does this mean for the Israeli war on Gaza? The Maori community in New Zealand took to the streets against proposals by the new government of the country. What is leading to this anger? This is the Daily Debrief. These are our stories for the day. And before you go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Yemen's Ansar Allah, popularly known as the Houthis, attacked two ships over the weekend, claiming that these attacks were part of the movement's solidarity with the Palestinian people. The spokesperson for the Yemeni armed forces said the ships had rejected warnings which led them to attack them. The US, on the other hand, claimed that three ships had been attacked and also said that one of its own vessels had shot down three drones. The US has also, of course, blamed Iran for these attacks. To understand the implications for the region, we go to Abdul. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. So, looks like the Yemeni armed forces uh, under the Ansar Allah, popularly known as the Houthis, have sort of escalated their attacks. Uh, all, 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 this all, already seen some attacks on this front, so it's a very interesting uh, move at this point of time. But for, could you first maybe take us through what is happening right now with regard to that? Well, on Sunday, there were, there were uh, reports about three ships uh, uh, basically attacked in, uh, in, in Red Sea. And uh, though the Houthis claim that they have attacked only two ships, the third ship, the, there was uncertainty about it, whether they have attacked it or not. But the U.S. claimed that all three of them were attacked by the Houthis. And in, in fact, they blamed uh, that as, they are, as has been their pattern ever since, that the Iranians are behind it. Of course, Iran later denied any role uh, in all those attacks. Uh, and the, the the two ships, as I said before, though uh, it was uh, basically the Houthis who claimed that they attacked it. Uh, both the ships uh, were Israeli-owned, and they were basically uh, crucial for the Israel's uh, uh, deploy, uh, sorry, supply of food grains and other essential products, which Israel imports from different parts of the world. And uh, therefore, it is a part of the larger uh, war which uh, Houthis have declared against Israelis for what they are doing uh, against Palestinians in Gaza for last uh, more than almost two months now. Uh, and and therefore, uh, the, uh, though uh, it was not clear whether the U.S. have ha U.S. has taken any retaliatory uh, uh, attacks or not. Uh, the U.S. claimed it, but the Houthis have denied uh, that they have the Yemen uh, has been targeted by any uh, attacks from the U.S. So this has been by and large the situation. Of course, this comes in addition to uh, what uh, had been the uh, cases of attacks prior to uh, prior to Sunday. Uh, of course, one uh, Israeli ship is still under the control of Houthis, which they took uh, earlier uh, last month. Uh, and therefore, uh, this is the overall situation at the moment uh, when it comes to the Red Sea. Uh, of course, uh, Houthi, uh, repeated Houthi attacks on the Israeli uh, ships has also led to some of the Israeli companies decide, uh, deciding to basically change uh, their sea route and taking the longer route all across uh, uh, the Atlantic and uh, uh, the Southern African co coast. Yeah. Right, Abdul, could you also sort of elaborate on the strategic importance of that whole area because it's the Bab el Mandab, uh, you know, a, a region. Uh, the Houthis, in fact, although it's a very narrow area, nonetheless quite significant for Israel and for the larger region as a whole. What we generally call Bab el Mandab is a narrow uh, route uh, which basically links between uh, links the Red Sea to the uh, Gulf of Aden, which is part of the Arabian Sea, and this ultimately goes to the Suez Canal, which basically crucial is crucial for the international trade, particularly the trade to Europe or from Europe to the rest of the uh, world in Africa or in Asia and in other parts of the world. So uh, a large amount of world's trade, uh, including energy products, are traded through this uh, reason. And therefore, it is very crucial, not only for the U.S. and uh, uh, the European countries, but also for Israel, because Israel primarily depends on the supplies through the Red Sea, uh, uh, particularly the food grains and other essential products. So that is one. So if there is a, a block uh, uh, created by the Houthis on Bab, Bab, Bab al-Mandab, 
that may lead to complete crippling of uh, the trade through the Suez Canal. And ultimately, the countries will have to take an alternative route, which basically is a very long route. Uh, uh, basically, Suez Canal was created to basically shorten the route, uh, which was originally what is called Cape of Good Hope, uh, all across the Mediterranean, then going through uh, the Atlantic, and then coming all the way to south of the Africa, and then particular, then entering the Arabian Sea, going to India or to the East, East Asia, East Asian region. So this basically cre- uh, increases the overall cost of a trade if there is a war going on in the Red Sea, it increases the cost of the trade uh, manifold. And uh, most of the uh, uh, countries will not be uh, willing to take that extra cost. And therefore, this ca- may create uh, pressure on most of the c- countries to take some effort to basically uh, 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 kind of uh, pressurize Israel to take so uh, basically pressure Israel to agree for humanitarian ceasefire or ceasefire in Gaza. That was the, of course, that was the logic with which the Houthis have uh, basically started uh, this uh, particular uh, set of attacks. And uh, so far, it has not um, uh, resulted in the desired, uh, 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 has not bring brought the desired results. But of course, there is an increasing pressure, as I said before, as some of the Israeli companies have have been forced to take the longer route, and this will this is not sustainable for them in the in the long term, and they will have to uh, look for some alternative uh, measures, which of course includes the political uh, considering the larger uh, political uh, uh, issues related to the war in Gaza. Right, I will not to mention the rising insurance costs also. I think for many of these ships, but in this context, also important to sort of see. Uh, like you said, the U.S. immediately quick to blame Iran uh, for these attacks. And the uh, U.S. has always claimed that the Houthis are just a proxy for Iran. But uh, do you also see Israel and the United States thinking of escalating this war at this point, uh, you know, beyond to Yemen, for instance, is already Lebanon and Hezbollah, which is also a challenge for them? Well, uh, it, it's more, very unlikely that the U.S. will uh, basically attempt to, or U.S. or Israel will try to escalate a physical war against the Houthis in Yemen, given the fact that uh, it is, of course, uh, to around 2,000 kilometers away from the Israeli uh, uh, coast. Uh, it, it is also uh, difficult, basically, given the larger implication it can have on, on the overall regional uh, uh, calculations. Uh, but there are uh, uh, attempts made uh, indirectly to pressurize Houthis. Uh, as uh, you rightly pointed out, uh, it, uh, the portrayal of Houthis as an as a kind of uh, allies to uh, Iran and uh, not only allies, sorry, proxies to Iran is basically an attempt to basically delegitimize the the overall agency and the independence of the Houthis when it comes to taking crucial decisions. So that may have a political implication that which U.S. is trying to create. Apart from that, if you see. Uh, World Food Program, of course, it may be completely unrelated, but there is a development which basically hints towards uh, pressure f- coming from other uh, uh, corners. Uh, 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 basically, World Food Program suspended its food distribution uh, program in the Houthi-controlled area in Yemen, and it, it said that lack of funds is the reason. But it is it is going to continue the food distribution program in the other regions which are controlled by within Yemen, which are controlled by the Saudi-backed uh, forces. So this uh, this kind of, uh, and given the fact that uh, Yemen is not, particularly the northern Yemen where Houthis are uh, stronger, uh, Houthis have some influence, they are not in a position to kind of take care of millions of Yemenis uh, who are uh, f- uh, food is insecure, who have suffered for the almost six, seven years, eight years of war. And this may create a pressure on them to kind of reconsider their position uh, on the war uh, in Gaza. So, of course, there is no uh, attempt at this moment to take a direct physical uh, um, war, start a direct physical war with Houthis uh, by the U.S. or the Israelis. But though it is not confirmed, there are pressures created from other corners, which can, uh, with the idea that this may force 
Houthis to kind of uh, 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 reconsider. So this kind of indirect, just like what happened, uh, what was uh, attempted uh, with the Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon. Uh, so similar things are being attempted uh, uh, against Houthis also. Uh, so uh, political propaganda portraying Houthis as proxies of um, Iran and kind of other kind of pressures basically are the, uh, are the tools used by the US and Israel at this moment, not direct confrontation, because that may prove uh, much more costly than these uh, measures, which will have lesser uh, cost. Well, Abdul, thank you so much for that analysis. We'll get back to you in the coming days as well. Thousands of Maori protesters took to the streets in New Zealand on Tuesday against what leaders say are plans to reverse affirmative action and dial back the use of their language in the country. A new right-wing government has taken power in New Zealand and some of its constituents have been using the rhetoric of equality to target the rights of the indigenous Maoris. We go to Anish to understand more. Anish, thank you so much for joining us. Very important protest in New Zealand, uh, which has had a new government uh, and, you know, uh, indigenous Maori protesters, I think, making some very strong points which of course have a lot to do with the fact that New Zealand is a settler colonial nation ultimately. And so what are the arguments? What really is the issue of contention? Well, uh, the central uh, issues are basically uh, the fact that the government wants to review or maybe uh, even do away with the affirmative action policies that exist in New Zealand uh, to phase out the use of Maori language uh, when it comes to naming buildings, uh, you know, in government documents, or even in government, uh, uh, you know, any kind of orders and stuff like that. And um, very most importantly, uh, the, uh, it also wants to phrase out or spell out uh, the foundational treaty of, uh, of uh, the New Zealand as a nation, uh, which is the Treaty of Waitangi, uh, which pretty much uh, recognized uh, Maui, uh, Maoris as uh, uh, being the original inhabitants, uh, giving them some level of, uh, you know, very basic autonomy and rights as subjects and, you know, as citizens of New Zealand. And this foundational document has often had its own contentious history, obviously, but uh, definitely it has always been the platform for, uh, for Maoris, for, uh, especially during the civil rights uh, movement that also happened in New Zealand uh, in the 50s and 60s. For them to use, uh, they use this as a platform for them to, uh, you know, gain more rights, more uh, recognition, and which the governments has, uh, have responded over the years. And uh, they want to actually, uh, you know, uh, put out a manner in which it's phrased, uh, you know, maybe even alter uh, the basic principles of the document. That is what the Maoris generally fear. So what we're looking at is a very right wing government. Uh, which is trying to use uh, a very same set of, you know, a very right-wing settler colonial argument that everybody has to be treated equal. Um, but uh, Maoris are asserting uh, their uh, their existence, not just as the original inhabitants, but as also the original inheritors of, uh, of the land uh, that uh, the settler colonial uh, white population uh, are pretty much uh, ruling over right now. And uh, this is not something new. We have seen mobilizations even in the, under the Jacinda Ardern government uh, during uh, you know, various issues uh, that actually did crop up, especially uh, over uh, traditional Maori land uh, and you know, development projects on that. But this sort of militancy is coming back that has been absent for quite a while. It has to do with how the Maori leadership had uh, you know, made compromises in the past, but definitely right now, it is coming back in a big manner, and that is what uh, this National Day, uh, this National Action Day, uh, was pretty much about uh, right now. Right, Anish, how has the government responded? Has it acknowledged, in some senses, uh, the kind of uh, protest? Because by New Zealand standards, it was quite a substantial protest, and in multiple cities that too. So, what is the government's likely path ahead? Uh, it is quite likely that the government is going to uh, try to ignore them as much as possible. They have actually called uh, the protests as unfair, uh, quote-unquote, uh, whatever that might mean. And uh, them, uh, they have already uh, spelled out that they will be trying to, uh, as, you know, spell out policies that will treat everybody equally or, you know, will give everybody equal rights, which is pretty much uh, a very couched uh, language uh, when it comes to 
taking away uh, some very uh, fundamental recognitions that Maoris uh, and indigenous people uh, who are also uh, who may not be Maoris have rec- uh, have received over the years uh, through very hard struggle and you know uh, and the fact that their land has been colonized their lands were taken away they were put uh, put through generations of poverty uh, homelessness and it has right now reached a point where uh, there is some kind of reconciliation however basic that be but that is being uh, threatened at this point in time that possibility of reconciliation or even uh, you know confronting the colonial past and that is being threatened right now by this a very i mean all the reports keep trying to emphasize the center to right government but this is pretty much a very outrightly right the most right wing government that new zealand has seen uh, in the recent past and which has very clearly had uh, you know has members uh, who have had very problematic statements especially against the indigenous people and also migrants and asylum seekers and so on and so this pretty much uh this uh entire moment uh, we have to wait and see how far they're going to go uh in making sure that the government does not uh get away with whatever it is planning to do because we also do not know what their plan is exactly they have just given us some policy pointers but uh, their how they're going to implement that is going to be significant uh and how uh, these protests if uh, and we might see more to come uh in the coming days uh how is that going to affect the government stand uh, that has to that remains to be seen but definitely we're looking at as i said uh, a new uh, phase of militancy and you know uh, assertion by the maoris and that is something quite significant for new zealand not just new zealand but also the region as a whole because we have very recently seen a very similar uh, issue of you know recognizing indigenous rights in australia in neighboring uh, australia and that itself has its, has had its own sort of politics but definitely maori politics have always influenced uh, indigenous uh, assertion in this region and so we have to uh, this is something quite significant for the region as well thank you anish for that analysis we'll come back as the issues further develop that's all we have in today's episode we'll be back tomorrow with another episode in the meanwhile do visit our website peoplesdispatch.org follow us on all the social media platforms and if you're watching this on youtube please hit the subscribe button Thank you.